Recording started. All right. Should we try to, should we just, should, do you want to do the intro with the music? Should yeah, let's we? Let's try it. All right, let's yeah, do it. All right, here we go. All right. You're now listening to your favorite Major League Soccer podcast, The RSL Show with Andy, Alex, and Josh. Perfect. Is that the, is that the train impersonation there? Oh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it sounds very similar to, to to when you impersonate Trey, you know. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> hey guys, uh, we're we're trying out Streamyard, and it gives us like this whole little studio, and you can use like music in the background and all these things. It's kind of silly. Here, look, watch. I'll play another song to kind of like set the tone, you know. So if like if we had segments, right? Rail what you're really Salt trying Lake. to say is we're going to get way more obnoxious. Yeah. Rail Salt Lake takes on LAFC in Carlos Vela. Oh, you're right, dude. That does sound like somebody we know. <laughs> All right. All right. Enough of that. We're not going to do that. Uh, hey, what's up, guys? It's uh, Andy Munoz from the RSL Show, and we've got Alex Napolis. Alex, what's up, dude? How you doing? What's up, guys? How's everyone? How's, how's everything going? <sighs> we're going great. And, uh, well, we're hang good. on. We got a... Got a uh the other guy joshua clark hey what's up dude <laughs> hello co-hosts hey what's up how's everybody doing man how's what's today tuesday it good is. yeah sounds right yeah we're doing all right doing good <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> no one had caffeine today apparently. dude i'm so off bro I actually when i got up earlier to just like that's what I was like. I checked the fridge for like an energy drink, and I'm like, nope, don't have one. Um, but no, let's get into it. Let's uh, let's bring the high energy. Uh, Rail Salt Lake loses uh, zero to three at home uh, versus LAFC, who seems to have our number, and uh, they pretty much have have it their way when they come here. And it's Highlight City, and uh, yeah, Los Angeles Football Club, man. So what else can we say? It's really disappointing when you've only won two games against a team. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that they, they spend money on players we don't. It shows. <laughs> that's that's the nitty gritty, man. Like I don't, I don't even want to talk about this game, right? You guys are kind of feeling it too. Like, wow, same old, same. Here we go again. Yeah. Yeah, you guys are and then, in. You know, the, the salaries come out today, and it just adds to the bottom of the list, right? It's really yep. unfortunate that because honestly, like that first half, it wasn't that bad from RSL, despite a few defensive mistakes that obviously caused the goals. But before the second one even went in, there was so many opportunities to get in front or to tie it up, and we just couldn't. And it's yeah, and it's I think... disappointing. Yeah, this this whole like hanging in games but not finishing our chances thing, it's, it's costing us, man. It's costing us points. So we're getting you know shut out at home. It's just not good, and I I don't know where goals are going to come from against quality opponents, right? Sure, we scored four against Portland. We also conceded four. What's the give and take there? And and Portland's a poorer side, more on the you know the level of RSL. But when you're playing these top sides from the east and the west, dude, we're just getting run off the pitch. It's not even it's not even fair. This is just like watching, you know, the top end of the EPL play the bottom half. It's just <laughs> it's boring for us. Yeah, it's 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 unfortunate um, because, yeah, I mean, yeah, we were coming into this one feeling feeling good, I guess, if you will, um, coming off the the draws and and um, five straight unbeaten. But, oh, dude, I hate that spin, dude. I hate that spin. <laughs> Such but, a dumb spin. It actually, it actually confused like some people online because it's mm -hmm. like five unbeaten. Hold up. You I mean yeah? You factor in obviously open cup against that, and there's draws. But I don't know, man. It's it. It just feels like uh, it feels like this club is just really good at spinning and twisting to make things sound positive, and it must be exhausting for. Whoever has to draw that up and then just kind of live by that and believe that it's mm -hmm. like, I don't even have a good analogy for it, but it's like, you're, you're just writing positive headlines as the 
asteroid is just shadowing the planet. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yep. And, you like, know, Bruce Willis oh, isn't there to, to stop it. <laughs> ultimate destruction on the horizon. But it's our third sunny day, guys, since we spotted the asteroid coming. Yeah, it's I don't know, man. I, I you know, new listeners of this podcast might be tuning in at the most horrible time of Real Salt Lake season or yeah, Real Salt Lake as a I don't know, man, it. This is the the roughest start to a season that I think we've had in, in a long time because I don't remember having this type of like negativity, somberness, uh, you know, being this critical, this unmotivated to cover this club. And so, if you're new here and you all you do, like all you think we do, is just talk smack on this club, we're not trying to, but it's hard. It's hard to get excited, oh, man. We've it's like it's like a broken record dude it's like uh i feel like we're van halen on the back end of their career now we're just like doing the tour and playing the hits because we have to you know what i mean yeah and you're only uh, playing at cabo wabo restaurants and (laughs) you know what i mean like you're selling out denny's uh yeah it's it's hard it's hard to um i mean there's glimpses of positivity and there's you know, I don't think as a fan base, I don't think we're too hard to please uh, everybody like we did, like we covered before. You get a few open cup draws, score some bangers in the open cup. We're pretty happy. But when a town, when a when a club like LAFC comes to town and reminds you that yes, you're a three zero club uh, versus the top tier talent, and you're nowhere near that caliber of play, you don't possess the stars you don't have people who can finish uh we're gonna come and just keep embarrassing you at your home field i think that's that's like that good reminder that we need um and i don't know what needs to change uh brian dunseth on the commentary man just he's obviously not taking jabs but he's just stating the obvious we don't have anybody that that can finish plain and simple we don't have anybody no one had anyone right yeah Cordova happened to put a handful away last year, but even with Cordova, we didn't have a clinical finisher. And that's just the way it is. Like you can argue with me till you're blue in the face, but you're, you're going to be lying to yourself if you think Cordova was the guy, right? Euro was never the guy. Finley 2.0 was never the guy. Ortuño was never the guy, right? The the list goes on and on. Bobby Wood wasn't the guy. Rubin's not the guy. I don't know who the guy is. I doubt we'll ever get one. Okay. I'm just bitter and salty at the at this moment. So we'll we'll be we'll be able to come back to this. I know, I know, Alex, you'll have plenty to say about this, the the subject, the topic. But you know, I'm starting to think that it's weird, man. We let go of these players, right? And they start producing, and they are getting on the highlight reel. Uh, Miram gets a brace with Charlotte FC. Literally, what second match with them? Uh his first i i think yeah you're you're probably right i I, i'd have to double check what what the hell's going on here well like what's happening here i what is their system right the the other players are going to systems that fit them better that's one thing but we can't be so far off that these players come and they don't you know they're not producing goals i mean granted miram assists right an assist machine good with hold up play always uh you know whipping the balls into the box uh for my eyes pretty valuable piece but you break away and you go play with a club that you've trained with a few times and you're getting a brace it's just like what's what's what is it what is it we have talented players uh we 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 spent money at least in one area, but where's the disconnect? Like I am genuinely asking what is going on, dude? We're, we're one of the worst teams in in major league soccer. Yeah. It's, it's baffling, honestly, right? You can always go back to the nine to six, whatever. We're still better than that. Like I truly believe this roster isn't far off from a very good competitive roster. 
but I, I I don't know how to fix what's going on now, right? Outside of the the general consensus of throw money at the problem, which got to do anyway. But I don't know what else is wrong. I don't know if this is a, a systemic issue, if it's a locker room issue. If yeah, I don't know. What do you think, Alex? I mean, I'll I'll say this about about the locker room is. The, these are guys who are going to play for each other, no matter the circumstance. These are guys who are going to go out there and give their all for for the guy that's lined up next to them in the starting eleven, right? Uh, we mm-hmm. saw that kind of mentality against Portland. You go down early, but they didn't give up. They they fought back and and was able to get that win, a super important win in Portland, nonetheless. But it, it's I still feel like we're just not playing a system that's going to be playing the strengths of the players we have. We've we've talked about it a lot before, where Savarino who has been a lot better in recent games, but at the big start of the season, we just couldn't get him involved in the attack. I still think we're relying on someone like Demir Krylak, who it hurts to say, but I just don't know if he's that solution anymore. Um, it, we're still, it, the system I feel like that we're trying to play and trying to do just doesn't play to the strengths of the players that we actually have. And it's something we've said time and time again. And I think teams just exploit that um, because they find the gaps. They find us not closing the lines. They find us um, those those little room in between and behind the defense. And we're conceding a lot and we're not scoring enough. And it's as simple as that. So criticism just kind of falling on to Pablo. I think that's kind of where it it falls back on uh usually is is what the consensus is is at least online is that uh you know either Pablo's uh tactics and that's really what it comes down to is like tactically you know we've heard that he's a tactical genius um when the Houston came to town uh head coach for Houston was like yep dude's gifted tactically we hear it all the time from, uh, you know, people at the club. But that's it. it just kind of seems to, to always fall back onto Pablo, and it almost seems like the the shift has gone from, you know, issues at the FO and like the spend back to Pablo. Who who's who's like uh, who's more to blame here in this scenario? Do you think? Would you think that it comes down to coaching, or is it the FO? And you know, if one had a outweigh the other like say 60 40 like where would we place it at you know that this is hard because coaches have systems they want to play right they when they get hired they they tell the management this is what i'm looking to play if that fits what you want to do here great if not sayonara right i might decide to play what you want to play but probably not so i think when that happens it's the fo's responsibility to get the coach players to fit said system I feel like that's where that's broken down. We we don't have the players Pablo needs to play the way Pablo wants to play, if that makes sense. And 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 I agree. Um I also I, I want to give Elliot the benefit of the doubt because Andres Gomez is was such a gamble br- bringing mm. it in for the club record fee and it's so far it's paying off, so far it's working. So I'll give him that benefit of the doubt. But you go back a year ago to the Quayar situation where we couldn't get him over the line and that's a guy Pablo wanted. We get to the striker situation where time and time again, Pablo is asking the front office that he needs a striker. He wants a striker for this team. We bring in Cordova as kind of like a little bandage last year, but we 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 don't do it. We don't bring him back this year, and we also don't really replace it. Um, so while Elliot has done the positive of bringing Gomez this off season, I also don't think he's done enough to give Pablo the supply to to play the way he wants to play, and it, it it's. We've seen it before, like with Cuellar. We've seen it with the striker situation. Um, it's it's kind of a pattern um, that we're seeing uh, right now with, with RSL. Yeah, it feels like there's if there's any big big name linked, I guess big big for RSL, right? Not within the league, not within the Blitzer Umbrella Group, but like a link that's a DP essentially always seems to fall through. Whether there's actual flames, or it's just smoke. Like nothing ever comes of it. And I've heard a few times it's because things were delayed right with negotiations things like that comes down to deadline day and we just don't finish the signing like i i don't know if agents target us for that which i'm sure happens a little bit maybe they've figured out that we're an easy target and it just keeps happening to us right but that's something the front office needs to improve on i would love to see us linked with a player and then have it happen in a reasonable amount of time or at all right yeah, that's all I want at this point. I want to see us linked, 
and signed and someone that you know isn't a nobody i'm fine with nobodies from time to time but you got to give us something proven soon please yeah and we'll get into the salary spend which uh mls put out uh just today actually uh so we'll break down the salaries with real salt lake and we'll you know we'll we'll kind of circle in and and see whether some of these salaries are justified or not i i kind of was browsing it as you guys were talking just now and some seem pretty reasonable but there's some that are a little questionable um but i don't know man it's tough it's especially on the salary side it's tough to uh it's i don't know it's tough to say hey well, you, you you performed well this year so now here's your pay and hey now you suck so we're gonna decrease you like it's yeah it'll I, be interesting to go over this team salary spend too because it's all over the place and it's actually quite interesting to like look into. Yeah. So we'll take a closer look. Alex, you, you, you look like you had something to say, dude. Got oh, something? I was, yeah. I was just going to say that at the same time, but we'll, we'll talk about it too later, but we have to, when we deep dive into these salaries, we got to take it with like a little bit of a grain of like not grain of salt, but I guess proceed with caution type deal because there's so mm-hmm. many rules in major league soccer that has that that is why some of the players are where they are because we need to be roster compliant because of the absurd amount of rules that major league soccer has um as far as roster goes yeah it is public information as well too but it, i don't know something about just saying the actual numbers actually kind of makes me wince and like i feel grimy doing it so maybe we'll you know we'll kind of uh we won't say the exact number unless you guys want to i i don't know i feel kind of grimy doing that but um i'm more interested in talking about basically like the low spenders and where at the table and and the high spenders yeah. and where that at the table so that's yeah. what i kind of want to get into not necessarily the numbers yeah we'll take a look so um before before we jump into that so just to kind of close out the the last thoughts with you know the fo versus the coaching and all that and where the where the um, blame may lie, Alex, you had some interesting something interesting happen in the press that you text us about when you were asking, you know, hey, is this roster complete? Or you know, I guess you could explain it better. But it, there was a blatant like difference in answering between Justin Glad and Pablo Mastroini. So yeah, tell us a little bit about that, dude, and then we'll kind of comment on it. Yeah, so the post-game presser um, again, after the LAFC game, um, because of how many opportunities we had in the game, we asked Pablo in Spanish. We were like, hey, is a striker still a position that you need filled? Are you still looking for that striker? And he just straight up was like, yeah, we we in the organization, we're looking, and we're really hoping to bring in someone in for the summer window um, because it's needed uh, for this team, um, which we agree. We can all agree that that's true. Um, but Justin Glad comes in after, um, and credit to Justin Glad for, for, you know, facing the media after such, such a tough, weird loss. Um, but he came in and I asked him the same question. I was like, Hey, is the striker position need, we need filled? Um, and he was like, no, I believe in the guys that we have now. You know, I see him in practice every day. I believe I know what they're capable of and I believe in them 100%, which again, that just goes back to what I was saying earlier. This, this is a team that has a good mentality that's going to go out there and fight for the guy standing next to them in the starting 11. But at the same time, and you know, as a player, you don't want to say anything negative about your teammates, right? Especially in front of the media, but it's, I'll, I'm going to take Pablo's word on this one because it's, it's, it's true. It's what we need um, in order to, to score those opportunities that we had against LAFC. Yeah. I think Pablo was just given the, or not Pablo, Justin was giving the PR answer, right? That's the, mm-hmm. that's the trained up answer. <laughs> from from a guy that's been around, I believe. Uh, Guarantee that's not how he really feels, right? Like especially as a center back, you're just watching, you know, at the back of your net ripple, and it's it's hard to defend for an offense that isn't ticking, and same for an offense, you know, it's hard for them to play for a defense that isn't ticking, right? So, you, you know, in Justin's head, he's like, yeah, I would love it if they'd score more goals. Uh, it's not good enough. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, props to him for giving the the. The answer that doesn't upset anybody. I I understand we're handling sports and it's different, but what that kind of you know, and it's I guess it's unfair to really say this, but I think it just has to be said is that, um, you know, it almost feels like they're not on the same page. Now I know it's a big contrast be- between a defender and a head coach, but you, it makes you kind of wonder like, well, what's the communication like 
when you know they they have team meetings they're always meeting they're meeting all the time right um whether it's like watching film or just meeting or you know studying like their next opponent or reviewing like what happened in the last match um it just makes you wonder if you know if things like that are said where hey we we need help up here but i don't know i it's yeah maybe, maybe it's not a fair it's not fair to say that there's a big disconnect maybe if it was like somebody like uh elliot fall saying what justin said and then you know pablo mistrini you know saying something different um lately uh also elliot fall you know i feel like <laughs> attention's been kind of dragged away and no one's bringing up his name uh which i don't know i just it's weird it's weird how we fluctuate as a fan base where it's like it's so hard on elliot false a few weeks and then it's like pablo and then it's i don't know it's it's hard man it's it's like who who are we going after sometimes okay that's that's just being a passionate fan base man you just well, get mad when when you know when you're when you're at a workplace and something isn't going right for you guys or whatever people tend to get upset and they tend to start pointing fingers and blaming and i think that's sometimes what people get caught up doing they want to point fingers over here they want to point fingers over there but really look at the bigger picture and and kind of see what's going on within a hole yeah which isn't too exciting yeah way to dull the damp in the mood with that one alex <laughs> It, yeah we get listen it's it's not always like this when we also like what is winning and there's things to be excited about promise you these episodes are much happier but if you're a real fan and you care about this club man you're just concerned you're just as concerned as us and you're asking the questions and uh you're hoping that the results change and you hoping and you're hoping that some results go in our in our favor in our way um because yeah bad soccer this is what you get man the media is not excited about you and uh like we literally only cover real salt lake we don't cover anybody else and so imagine being like a full-on blown on sports department where the soccer's not good well they're gonna cover everything else except for your team uh at this moment so yeah you know i hope there's pressure felt um it's not to say that we're adding pressure or adding to the pressure. I don't think people really take us that seriously sometimes. Uh, after all, we are just a quote unquote fan blog. Um, but yeah, I, I hope uh, I hope they're feeling it over there. And I hope that uh, they're at least having the, the discussion or, um, you know, thinking of ways to get creative so that we don't suck. Plain and simple. Yeah, let's uh, let's talk about the MLS salary outlay now. Let's, let's change the subject. Talk up. Oh, do you guys want music? All right, let's try it. Hang on. Play or try it. <laughs> the MLS salary brought to you by. Hey, if you want to sponsor the show, we could say your name right here. Just kidding, dude. We haven't tried to look for sponsors in a minute. That's okay. We yeah. don't need. We don't need. Okay, solve the problem now. Yeah, that's I mean, true, man. <laughs> All right, MLS salaries. All right, let's pull it up. Let's go down the list and um, let's break this puppy out, dude. Also, you know what's funny, man? Can you imagine if, uh, imagine if like companies just all over Salt Lake City were just like, hey, we're going to release just all of our salaries and they just <laughs> threw it out here and they're like, yeah, Andy Munoz gets paid this much. Too. Oh, he's overpaid, bro. He, this, he's, he is not valuable. And then it's like Alex Napolis, really underpaid. Joshua Clark. Joshua Clark brought in two mil working at whatever. Okay. That'd be dope. Yeah, that'd be dope. All right, cool. 2023 MLS player salary is updated as of April 30th, 2023. I'm just going to, yeah, yeah, two weeks ago. Uh, and just made public knowledge. So, how do we want to do this? Do we just want to go down the list or should we uh, start from the most expensive to the least? Like what, what, how do you think, guys want to break this down? I think let's start with uh, our biggest surprises on the list. Biggest surprises on the list. All right. Here's one. Uh, and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is, I think this is what this would imply. We're still, we're still paying Yoni Menendez. That is correct. Yes. Oh, God. All right. Part of the loan. 
five hundred thousand, dude. And I don't think we're paying 000. the entire, but yeah, yeah, five hundred. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, it's it's a failed signing, huh? Yeah, I don't know where else. I mean, I don't know where we would go for the breakdowns on, uh, you know, gross versus net versus whatever percentages. Um, okay, here we go. Well, let's just do this. Just if, well, I'll just name some names and I'll name out the uh, the number. And then you guys tell me whether it's a decent salary, if they deserve more, if they deserve less. Okay. okay. Our boy, Diego Luna, the golden child, everybody's favorite. Um, which, by the way, I like the guy. But, like, dude, come on, produce, bro. All right. 120000 guaranteed compensation, $134,380. Is that oh, number... We doing the, are we doing the roster or the league? Oh, I thought we were doing roster, bro. Oh, I'm fine. I, I was looking at the league, so that's why I was just really confused. I'm sorry. Okay. League, like what, in terms of what, like different, like the actual spend of the clubs in total? Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm going down per rosters, but do you want, if you want to just go down teams we could we could do that too let's just say our, our biggest surprises um with what team spends right so mm, like okay yeah okay oh, you know what you drive josh go ahead you, you drive. Mean, you mean like toronto fc in first place well we all like we all kind of knew that right with insinge but i think my biggest surprise is st louis at second to last and that just means bad. they spent that money well <laughs> let me tell you well and then if you look at how much money Berkey's making, like two compared to the rest of the team, like right. that. Well, how is he not a DP? You know what I mean? <laughs> Conspiracies. But it, it's it's good. Good on St. Louis. Um, they invested in a, they invested it well. Um, they're not doing bad. They're in a little bit of a, a rough stretch right now. But shout out St. Louis. That's What's your uh, biggest surprise, it's, Alex? it's surprising. Go ahead. Yeah, what'd you say? <laughs> no, we're just we're, no, we're just thinking. No, we're just thinking, bro. Uh, no, it is surprising. Um, yeah, St. Louis, man, good on them. Good on them. It, also, it's really interesting to see like the teams near the top and how they're doing, you know, in the league compared to their salary. You look at right. a team like LA Galaxy, who is underperforming this year. You look at Toronto, who's underperforming. Um, Atlanta, who's entered a really tough stretch, DC United, who's among one of the top and amongst one of the lowest in the league as far as table standing goes. So it's really interesting to see kind of where where teams are at. Yeah, spending the money doesn't always guarantee results, right? Like we're over here harping on we need a goal scorer, a six or whatever. It doesn't mean we don't want them to spend money, but we don't necessarily want them to be at the top either like it doesn't always translate and we get that but right now i feel like we're not investing in the right part of the squad so yeah and there's there's a big difference between spending and investing um and i feel like in the case of mls rosters lafc who are like the middle of the pack as far as spending goes but they've invested really really well they've brought in really good players really talented players they've invested that money fantastically dc united toronto that could be a team that is just spending, spending to try to be competitive, but it's not investing it into the right areas. I think they've put a lot into, like a, a team like Toronto, for example, they put a lot into their DPs and their attack with Bernadeschi, with uh, Insigne, but their defense is really what's causing all this issue. They didn't really invest that money. Repeat that last part, bro. We had some internet issues. So repeat that last part. Like your last sentence. Part, uh, they, uh, the defenders. The issue. Yeah, the defenders are the issue. I, I feel like defensively, Toronto is the, like defensively, they need to invest into that defensively rather than bringing in all these like lucrative DP players. Yeah, they got to spread it across the spine instead of all exactly. at the very top, right? Christmas mm-hmm. tree is a little imbalanced. <laughs> dude i'm trying i'm sorry man i am like i'm online just trying to find this list bro i am trying to find because i see okay here's what i see uh, top five salary spends in mls all right i was just i was just trying to see like the middle of the pool and all right 
Yeah, you've Check got Toronto, group, like yeah, just like we said. Hours ago. Are you guys having internet issues? Because I can't. I don't know no. what's happening. No, 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 <laughs> no, <laughs> no. All right, Josh Clark just sending message private chats in here. All right, no top five uh, salary spends in MLS, and then the bottom five. Okay, I know you guys just like kind of just went over this. Uh, but if you guys want to know the, know the numbers, so to- Toronto FC at 25.7 mil, LA Galaxy at 23.5 mil, Atlanta United 21.3 mil, DC United 20 mil, Austin 19.9 mil. And to your guys' points, the majority of the clubs in the top five, not doing that great. Um, bottom five. CF Montreal, 10.5 million spent. Uh, St. Louis City, 10.9 mil. New York Red Bulls, uh, 11.2 mil. Orlando City, 11.2 mil. And then uh, I guess this is going up from like 29th up to 25, where Real Salt Lake is at. Uh, 12.2 million. So what does this tell us? Is it is it actually money that is going to bring us results? No, it's it's the investing. Um, I feel like most, if not a lot, of our salaries are going towards youth, going towards youth players. Um, it's investing for the future, but it's not really investing towards the now. If that makes sense. Yeah, that's kind of like I, I would be it. totally fine if they went and signed like a Gomez type striker, right? A young kid a decent transfer fee but was performing well and has all of the traits that can transfer i know that's like not a easy thing to find but like that i would rather see that than like some 35 year old dude from the bundesliga or something you know what i mean exactly see that young guy that we can resell later on but he can perform while he's here so i mean you guys are kind of saying things that are like um a little different from you know what's been uh asked for right like we we want somebody to come in that could be tenured or at least a talent but Mm -hmm. now where it's almost like we've shifted to okay well if we invest in the young talent that just kind of screams like rebuild well i mean you can invest in a in a 22 year old that's proven like that's not horribly young right there's a uh under 21 initiative no you 22 you 22 yeah so you can still go find a guy that's been playing and proving himself for three years or four years in a league right and and still invest and resell later it, it just makes more sense to spend a couple million on a guy that has a high upside and cash that upside in than buy someone that's on his way out like a chichito yeah, and- yeah, and I'd rather I'd rather, much rather go for someone like Andres Gomez compared to someone who a, a Shakiri, for example, right? Um, a DP who was brought in to to be that to be a DP to be a star player and just hasn't really lived up to that billing. I would much rather in that situation. I would much rather have a Gomez, but I think really what Arsenal need is to target the twenty two to twenty seven year olds that you know are in Europe looking for a club, looking for playing time. <laughs> Who, who have been proven to be that scorer um, and they can fit right they can you know fit easily a DP slot yeah I hear what you're saying I think um, I don't know man maybe it's not as transparent or as easy as we might think I mean how, how many times have you just heard people just bitch about it on Twitter including us? but not well, bring actual options to the table because I don't I don't I've never I don't see any people tweeting or saying hey here's this player available who you know scored who has scored this much and has this many assists and maybe not playing and here's that they're they're at this club not that like you know not that that would actually influence a decision but i don't know maybe that's maybe maybe that's just too deep I, i mean i've seen it but my problem with that theory is damn near everyone else figures out how to do it. You know what I mean? Does that mean we need to invest more in our scouting department? 
does that mean we need to cast a wider net and where we look for players, right? Do we need to not just be looking in South America, well, right? And- Do we need to be scouting the Blitzer and Below Group networks more, more aggressively? Um, there's a lot of, there's so many things that go into that, but to say that like they are struggling to identify players, I, I don't know, like that's, that's their jobs, right? So I don't know. I, I think it's just, are you willing to spend the money and make the investment? Or are you looking for the needle in the haystack, the golden goose? Like, well, what's the, what's the approach? And part of the, the reason I don't think you don't see a lot of fans like, Hey, sign this guy. So everyone's just going to like, Hey, sign Messi, Right. But also we don't know. We don't know what the budget is. We don't know what the spend is. There's nothing to really go off of, right? Like right now, if I were to look at guys that RSL could sign, I'd be looking under free transfer because that's historically what it is. So that that's really where the I think the fans are hung up on looking on transfer market and seeing what's out there. And also, we're fans, so we're idiots. <laughs> yeah, I love I, I love that you bring that up, Josh. And sorry to interrupt, Andy, but that we're idiots. Uh, yes. N- n- <laughs> no. hey, by the way, uh, Josh, leave Chicharito out of this, bro. <laughs> I was wondering if you caught that. I did, man. Late, bro. If you're, if you're watching this on YouTube, you would have seen my my expression. All right, go ahead, Alex. I want to bring up the case of Vinny Buanga, uh, who we just played against and scored a screamer against RSL this past weekend. Buanga was a guy who was kind of team surfing in second division France, looking for his opportunity, looking for a team, looking for playing minutes. LAFC didn't really bring him in on that bad of a budget. I think he would just cost a little under six mil, which Gomez was for, right? And look at what Buanga has produced for LAFC now to this point. It doesn't need to be, you know, the youngest. It doesn't need to be the biggest name. It doesn't need to be the flashiest. But all credit to LAFC scouting department for going out, finding Buanga, who was in a tough situation where he needed minutes. He didn't. He needed a team. Bring him in, and now he's arguably the, the best striker in the league at the moment. And a freaking MVP right now. Seamless dude. Seamless replacement. Like complimentary, you know, to Carlos Vela, just like Chicho Arango was, uh, except on steroids, right? So, yeah, you're right, man. It can be done. You just need a competent... Uh, uh, what's the word, bro? Come on. Recruitment. Recruitment, recruitment. yeah. I was going to say recruiter, whatever. Um, yeah. Who knows, man? Who knows? We're just going to continue to pull. I mean, the reality is, is even if there is somebody out there like that, we're just going to keep continuing a pull from the blitzer group uh, i don't think we're gonna be out going outside of that much in terms of yeah. like you know signings that could actually have an impact that are somewhat pricey well I that would be wrong. pricey otherwise you know we pull them over here and you know get a better deal um so yeah hopefully it'll change man i want to i want to party and i want to have fun and i want to eat tacos at the tailgate and i want to rip my shirt off bro and like swing it over my head because we go 4-0 on like colorado rapids you know what i mean I wanna please have fun. we all want to have fun because you know what if a if a brand new shiny club from uh the, the the world's most beautiful city comes along and uh they just try it's it's probably not going to take much to you know appeal to some fans who uh might want to support a new club in Major League Soccer, right, Josh? <laughs> no. Okay. All right. So the news, uh, the news is out. Uh, whether it's like super mega confirmed, we're not sure right now. It's it's just kind of hitting all angles from kind of maybe credible sources. Well, Garber now has a meeting with the mayor. That's public. Uh, like an announcement, not a meeting, but announcement. So it's it's done. Oh uh, yeah, it's done. Yeah, it's, All right. Sportico, yeah. Sportico reported it earlier today too, and they're pretty up there. Very cool. Okay, cool. So yeah, I've been like half in, half out the door on Twitter today. So yeah, San Diego will be getting a club, Major League Soccer. I honestly didn't think this day would come, dude. I mean, 
we've always talked about it on this uh, podcast that that would just make sense. But uh, if you listen to the podcast prior, we literally were like, nah, Las Vegas would get a team way before San Diego would. Um, and we actually had a discussion leading up to this uh, because we were, you know, talking about what that would look like for the uh, Hispanic populace that is near San Diego, because yeah, you can go through the border and like pretty quickly, like 30 minutes, 40 minutes, and you're in San Diego catching MLS games, or you're doing quick friendlies with uh, Tijuana Cholos or, you know, clubs that will visit and play in San Diego. Cause uh, they've played there a lot. They they have a lot of uh, Mexican uh, team friendlies there. So I'm pretty pumped. Uh, I don't. I tweeted this earlier today. I don't want a San Diego SC. I don't want a San Diego FC. I don't want a San Diego um, United. I don't want the like uh, San Diego. Yeah, that'd be ugh, gross. I I mean, I really hope that that whole city when they want to be, depending who's running it, uh, full of creative people. I mean, you saw what the soccer community did with San Diego Loyal. You know what I mean? Just sweet culture, um, embrace the Hispanic Latino community out there, um, was really about the city. They have such a good culture out there. It's crazy. It's insane uh, for, a, uh, for a USL team. Um, so you would hope that they would mimic that with San Diego, just bring a better product. Um, will it be a club that's like heavy swinger going to try to compete with LAFC? We don't know. Um, or will it just be kind of another, uh, Western conference team that kind of hangs out mid tier, uh, does well underperforms, you know, kind of like the earthquakes or rapids or rail salt Lake. You never know when, when LAFC came, I remember, I mean, the way they marketed that dude, like you just knew that there was like something in the air and that they were going to do okay. some really cool this stuff. Master class. Yeah. yeah. So I think <laughs> a lot will, you know, I'm, I should be really stoked. I've always made the joke that as soon as San Diego got a team, like I'm out of here, Van Moose, bye. Um, but I, great. You're getting a team, but how are you going to run the team? How are you going to market the team? Uh, how competitive is this team going to be, right? So that's when I'll get excited, you know? As somebody who was born in San Diego and lived there, also like the majority of my 20s, love that place, have undying love for it. Uh, I'm still like, okay? Like, if it's cool, great. If it's not cool, it, it's tough. So, yeah, damn. Damn. That's crazy, man. The day is here. It's nuts. Yeah, I, I wish it wasn't San Diego, but <laughs> Vegas. I, I know California is popular, like populous and can handle teams, but it, it's just funner to see, you know, places you wouldn't really think of get teams, right? Like, I know Phoenix has some teams, but, you know, Phoenix yeah. would have been cool. Vegas, just some other places to kind of change it up a bit, right? Not follow the NFL NBA model of use, just using the same cities. So, I mean, it is what it is. I'm, I hope they do it cool. Like the loyal, because if they do that, then I'm going to be following them closely because, you know, I love their branding and their culture. Like Andy said, uh, but it could also go sideways, right? Like we've seen some of these new teams come in and you don't know what they're doing marketing wise, logo wise. Right. So let's hope it's not that let's hope it's pretty dope. They were somebody like somebody who tweeted. It's funny because like a lot of people from San Diego are tweeting it, but like somebody tweeted like Chivas de San Diego, you know, like <laughs> just mm. already busting out the Chivas jokes. Um, Club Deportivo San Diego. <laughs> oh my God. That'd be so sick. dude. <laughs> Club Deportivo. Wow. That'd be there dope. That would be dope actually. <laughs> that would be dope. I'm, I'm actually for that. Yeah, the like, Chivas jokes would never end though. Yeah. Yeah. Full on, full on just Spanish. Um, hey, it's good for like if you've never been to San Diego, it's old town. Like, there's old town San Diego. There's there's a lot of Spanish culture there. Like, like real actual Spanish culture. You know what I mean? Like, it's it's Maybe filled. You, like, street names are named after Spanish people. Let's give them Real, and we can yeah. rename our team. God, Lord, no, man. 
That's yep, that's, that's what we're gonna do. That name is so unlucky. Do. Name is unlucky. I will say this. There's no chance in hell that this would happen, bro. But if the gal, can you imagine the galaxy, bro, go to San Diego? Because like, what's gonna happen with the galaxy? Oh, they're in trouble. San Diego. Literally, if you're watching this on YouTube, here's San Diego, and then here's Carson, and then here's LA, and it's like. I don't know, man. It's just so close. But the thing is, here's the thing that I'll say about California, especially Southern California. If you're from LA, you live and die by LA. If you're if you're from San Diego, you live and die by San Diego. Like look at the Padres and the Dodgers, right? Um, but also what's unique too is like the Chargers left San Diego to go play in Los Angeles and a lot of LA people adapted the Chargers and 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 San Diego still they still yeah uh, you know they they support the Chargers right I, I still support the Chargers like I love I love all sports San Diego love the Padres all that stuff um so it's weird man it's an interesting dynamic down there but they got to learn how to keep the team and there's gonna have to be some serious spend to appeal um you know like it, it's gonna matter where they build the stadium. When I think of downtown, there's not a lot of space downtown in San Diego. So my thought is like the Mission Valley area, which for context is it's just as far from like downtown as as Harriman would be. Um, so but it's also Mission Valley is also really central. Um, so I don't know. It could, it could go a, a lot of a lot of different ways. Who knows? Exciting stuff, man. The league is growing. Um, I just hope they do it right, dude. Got to do it right by San Diego for sure. I love that you bring up the galaxy um, because this could potentially be the the end of the galaxy's like the end of the galaxy. Look at DC United, mm-hmm. who is arguably the most successful team in this league up until about ten ish, fifteen ish years ago, and then they won those five MLS cups, and they haven't really done anything since. Mm-hmm. And I could see the galaxy heading down that same path. Yep. Uh, Andy, for real quick, uh, they're going to start play at the 35,000 capacity Mission Valley Stadium. Oh, Mission Valley. Wow, dude. Hit it on the nail, bro. That's the San Diego uh, Stadium. San Diego State University? Yeah, the Aztecs. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Insane. Yeah. No, it's a great place, man. It's a beautiful place, dude. It's... It, and it's going to be great for soccer. And that's like, actually, listen, I'm probably biased here, but I will tell you if, if you've only been to Los Angeles, unfortunately in California, and you think that that's all of California, it's not San Diego, hundred thousand million times better, dude. Like it's a paradise, bro. I'm not even just saying that cause I'm from there. It's actually beautiful. Like catching away game there. It's going to be amazing. That'll be cool, man. Dang, dude. Oh, can you imagine if they open up the meeting? They're like, "All right, hey guys, uh, San Diego Galaxy, <laughs> bro." I'm I would pretty actually... sure there'd be rumors about that. Like <laughs> that wouldn't happen quietly. I don't think. No, nah, I, I, dude, I would, I would actually like that. I don't know. I, 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 I love when teams just take a spin for underdog, like the Galaxy, but <laughs> also the other factors like Chicharitos there, obviously, but. I like underdog except for when it's Real Salt Lake. Just you know, remove the under their dog and then just add the word crap on there. Cool, guys. There's so much going on right now. Um, interesting, fun things around the league, Major League Soccer. Um, if you guys haven't seen, there's uh, like all these incentives to. Join up with Apple TV, uh, get a free month or get a free year. There's all kinds of promotions. Um, And all of the product that they're putting out on the Apple uh, TV application is actually pretty good. I'm not opposed. And uh, obviously, you can still catch matches like on Fox every now and then. But uh, let's just talk about the upcoming schedule of Real Salt Lake. We'll include the uh, Open Cup matches. Um. So let's go ahead and pull that up. And actually, while we're doing that, let's just uh, let's play some music here real quick. Here we go. Okay. <laughs> Substance. 
This is some right. real like Napoleon Dynamite prom music. Right? Yeah, that's great, dude. Uh, okay. All right, here we go. Should we just, all right, over the music, let's do it. All right. Real Salt Lake taking on the Colorado Rapids, May 20th. Let's go ahead and preview that match. Let's look at where they, okay, Alex, please stop. Please stop bobbing your head, bro. All right. Uh, yeah, no, Colorado Rapids, um, May 20th. And I'm actually just kind of, no, yes, no. Yes, that's right. Is that right? Dude, I'm I mean, so out of it, guys. Let's take a look here. We got here. two games. Back we to back, Colorado. The Rapid. I'm, talking about, I'm talking about the one tomorrow. Oh, yeah, Portland. Yeah. Forgot that's, about that. Uh, is that the Open, <laughs> Cup, open Cup match? Yeah. Not yeah. league game. Nope. nope, league. League league game here. Dude, my internet is failing me big time, bro. I don't know why I'm off today, man. It's just crazy. Let's it's take a look. Full moon. It is. I think it is a full moon. You're right. What the hell, dude? It get that gave me a schedule from like a whatever. Okay, here we are. All right, guys. Yeah, Real Salt Lake, Portland Timbers at Real Salt Lake. Seven thirty p.m. America First Field. It'll be interesting to see how we decide to line up for that one, especially after what just another... happened in Portland. Yeah, I hope it's another like four or three game. Honestly, that was fun. It was a good. Time. It was. It was very fun. I just, I don't know, man. A, a league play, right, dude? I'm, I'm confused, bro. When does the Open Cup kick up for us again? I don't even. Next, next Wednesday. Do we still care about <laughs> Open Cup? Yes, yeah. that's all I care about right now. That and the Rocky Mountain Cup. It's like the only two things we can win now. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. And Colorado looked good. That's the scary part. So I'm nervous. Yeah. I'm just, man, I, wow. It's this caffeine thing, bro. I think it was sitting in traffic for an hour. just deflated me, bro. Traffic is yeah, horrible. Yeah, trying to rush. Yeah, traffic I here agree. in Utah is bad, bro. Someone Apologies like, for the low energy show, everybody. Yeah, we sound like all your other favorite RSL podcasts right now let's see so portland timbers at real Salt Lake, excluding el show rsl we love el show rsl by the way they have like the best content dude in spanish bro if you don't know spanish i suggest you learn spanish so you can go check that show out at josh at josh yeah josh t- <laughs> say something in spanish real quick for everybody no bad words uh, uh... i already know what you're gonna say I don't even know, dude. Just say the line, bro. If you're lost in Mexico, what do you say? No idea. If you're having an emergency, what do you say in Mexico? Donde? Donde esta? El baño? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, dude. (laughs) That's the one. Guys. Gotta go to the bathroom. That's the emergency. Okay, listen. Portland Timbers. Real Salt Lake, it's happening tomorrow. This show will be out. Let's just let's just preview. Let's just look at what these guys are going to offer and how we may respond. All right. Uh, so let's just kind of compare our our wins, laws, and draws. Real Salt Lake going in three six two, not the best start, rocky start, but we went five unbeaten. Look at us. We're so good. Uh, Portland Timbers, four five three. So it's like it's not a huge, huge contrast. That's one more win, one less win, and one more draw than Real Salt Lake. Okay. Um, I think uh, to you guys' point, just kind of going back and forth like we did with them uh, prior. I don't know. I mean, I, I feel like the roster is just going to... We should have a stronger roster if we're going to kind of pull out for league play now. No, we, we would have a, a lighter roster for the Portland game. And, and honestly, we wouldn't because we still have Colorado in league play on Saturday. And then Colorado again on Wednesday in Open Cup. Um, so I hope to see a fairly strong lineup 
uh, for Portland, right? Uh, the best lineup possible for Saturday, and then again the best lineup possible for Wednesday because I don't want to lose either of these games, Colorado. Uh, they don't deserve to have that over us right now. So, yeah, I think we just got to go, you know, pedal the metal for the next three games. I, I think right now is a really pivotal time um, because you really start to see where teams are gonna where teams are gonna go and land on the table um, at the end of the year kind of by looking at the table now. I think it's really pivotal that Arsenal starts wrapping up some points at home. It's been such a disappointing start to a team who's historically been so good at home. And Portland is the big opportunity to to kind of bounce back, regain that confidence and start start getting some really, really important points at home. So go all in on Portland, possibly rotate on the weekend uh, in the first one against Colorado. And then go all in on Colorado. You're in the last 16 of the U.S. Open Cup. This is the chance for CONCACAF. We talked about it last time. Go all in on Colorado. It's 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 go all in on the cup. Go all in on Open Cup. If we win Open Cup, I think that'll that'll help out a lot as where as far as where this fan base is. Go all in on Colorado and 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 Portland. And then on the weekend, just kind of rotate. Yeah, let's get that silver where we can get right. Exactly. And you don't even have to rotate that hard against Saturday, I don't think, right? Like one or two guys, maybe. Because um, it is that is a, a three-game week, but it's not a terrible ask. I don't think, you know, travel's not far. Uh, you have a home game in there. So I, I and, think we got to go as hard as we can the next three because that's six points in the league we can pick up and advance advancing to the, uh, you know, the top eight. So. I see no reason to to really heavily rotate the next three matches. And even if they do decide to rotate, I don't mean like, you know, start the Monarchs and over the weekend, right? I think fairly our rotated team against Portland did a yeah. lot better than I thought they would. Um, you know, Mike, I, Michael Chain, obviously with the brace and, and the goals, um, played a good game. Uh, and, and Mecca and Nelly looks fantastic in the midfield. Mm-hmm. Um just kind of rotations like that, a, a similar one to what we saw in Portland in the last round of the Open Cup, I would be okay with uh, against Colorado on Saturday. But then go go all in on Wednesday. Go for the Open Cup. Yeah, and I'm totally fine with that kind of thing on Saturday as well. I was more with yeah. the, the don't play the Monarchs, like the entire squad, right? Like yeah. you got to have that healthy mix because you know if you want this fan base to turn on you even quicker, it's losses against Colorado. Period. Well, and I don't, so. I don't know if it's confirmed or not yet, but I do believe that the team is staying the whole time in Colorado. They're not coming, traveling back. Um, I know Delmi. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know Delmi mentioned it to us. Um, and so even, so yeah, if, even if they like stay, we'll 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 see like that rotation that we saw um, against Portland because they'll already have those guys there. Yeah, it's not bad. I'm all about it. It's actually good. Yeah, stay the days. Stay the days in Colorado. Man, sounds sounds like torture, bro. Hey, uh yep. Portland Timbers. The Portland Oh my gosh, by the way, whoever was running the stream, bro, whoever was commenting on the YouTube stream, you guys were insane, bro. You guys were saying some things that could have gone the RSL show fired, man. Who I don't know who that is. We don't know who that was. But uh they were they were pissing a lot of people off from Portland on the YouTube stream, whoever that was. Anyways, uh, there was a yeah, Josh for context. I don't know. I just heard because I wasn't doing it. So there's a there there's a stream comment because they the Open Cup games are on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Somebody somebody from the RSL show we don't know who it was was basically um, chirping the whole game at the Portland fan base saying how Seattle was way better, uh, how, you know, um, Seattle Sounders own the Northwest, how uh, Seattle's just a cleaner, safer city, how there's no crime in Seattle uh, compared to Portland, how there's no human feces. Okay. Anyways. All right. (laughs) And uh, a lot, just a lot of people from Portland just were not having it. So I, I, I got a text from somebody and they were like, yo, our, wh- whoever's commenting on our cell show is going nuts right now. And I was like, dude, I have no idea who that is. Could be someone. I don't know. 
Uh, anyways, uh, the Portland Timbers fan base, from what I heard, are very, very soft. Um, oh, extremely. Super, super soft. I they, Yeah. All right. So let's talk about the Timbers real quick, though. In their last five regular league stretch games, here are the results. Portland beat the Seattle Sounders. Must have been a lucky win. 4-1. Okay. And then they went to, or excuse me, they played FC Cincinnati. Lost 1-2 to FC Cincinnati. Who's very Um, good. Yeah. They're very good. Okay. Uh, (laughs) St. Louis. They played St. Louis on the 29th of April. Uh, One, two, one. Okay. It's fine. Uh, Drew against Austin on May 6th, 2 2. Uh, and then they beat the Vancouver Whitecaps, 3 1. So, in their last five, three wins, one draw, one loss. So they, you know, unbeaten three out of the five. Actually, four out of the five. Actually, actual, actual real stats that matter. Unbeaten four out of the five. If you like a Real Salt Lake regular league, you can't say that. Right, so, um, it's a team with momentum, man. I see a team with momentum coming to our stadium. Historically, I think it's always been battles uh, between the Timbers and Real Salt Lake. Sometimes yep. we get ahead of them. Sometimes we don't. Right? It's just that's how it goes. But I just feel like in a spree of bicycle kick, late this is gonna yeah. go in. It's not October. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It only happens exactly. in October. <laughs> Mr. October. <laughs> let's just let's just let's just go into predictions real quick, man. Just with everything we've taken into account. And then we'll let you guys go. We'll let everybody go. Uh do we get a result at home? I'm gonna go first. I'm just gonna say Rail Salt Lake. Rail Salt Lake. 2-1 for us. And the goal is going to come from if he plays Yakison. He's going to get us first. Okay. 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 I'm going 3-2. 4? RSL. Interesting. I want to say Portland, but, you know, I'm not one of those negative fans anymore. <laughs> But I think, you know, I think we see a Sava goal. I think we see a Glad goal. And I think we see a Gomez goal. Ooh, dude. Okay. Which, by the way, man, that Gomez Open Cup goal, dude. Beauty. Insane, Beauty. man. Beauty. Insane. Granted, it was just against, like, some little kid. But still, it was amazing. <laughs> Alex? Uh, yeah. If you say six, so you're fired, bro. No, no, no. I, I I agree that this is a different Portland than what started the season. They're on the up and up. They're doing a lot better. But I still think they're too inconsistent defensively. I still think they're too inconsistent on the on the on the road. Um, they don't have that yet. And so I, I like our chances here at home. I'm going I'm going three one RSL just to be different from Josh, because I was gonna go three two, but I'll say three one. Okay, okay. Yeah. All right. General consensus, we all saw like dub. Guys, thanks for listening to us on the KSL Sports Network at RSL Show on Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Follow us for all the latest Real Salt Lake news. I'm Andy, that's Alex, and that's Josh. We'll see you guys on the next episode, and maybe we'll see you at the state. Dude, I think I'm going to go to the game. I'm going to go to the You guys going to the game? No? You have to work. Okay. Alex, you're going? Yeah. Uh, Yeah. Yeah, man, I feel like whipping out the old camera, bro, getting some cool highlights, dude. Maybe I'll go do that. I don't know. That's, go that's back to a, your roots, Andy. Go back to your roots and get some shots. Yeah, mid-match, or <laughs> excuse me, mid-week match, dude, right after work. is, is That's kind of hard, but we'll see. It'll be fun, man. It should be fun. All right, guys, we'll see you guys on the next episode. Thanks for keeping it here, and we will see you guys later. <laughs>